All right, awesome. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Surge webinar. Um, so before we jump into the presentation, I just want to introduce you to the staff that are here with us on the webinar today. Uh, so my name is Casey Ellison. I'm the editorial production assistant here on National Staff, so I'm part of our communications team. And I'm going to be one of the surge contacts. Um, so if you're enrolled in the program and you're assigned to me, I will be working very closely with you. And I'm Scott Parker. I'm the VA production coordinator. And I will also be a surge contact. So if you're one of my contacts, I'll be working closely with you. And I'm Megan Kaufman. I'm the director of chapter services. And my role is to oversee the entire project. So while I may not be working directly with you, um, I'm definitely going to be someone who can be helpful if you have any questions or feedback about the initiative. All right, it's important to note, too, that your chapter consultant will also be a very important piece of this puzzle. So as always, they are a great resource for you. And though they won't be working directly um, with this process, they will be keeping track of your progress and kind of in tune with what's going on with your chapter. Um, and they're always there to support you in planning your recruitment events. So today on our agenda, we are going to talk about recruitment and why it's important, and also the history of this initiative. We're going to explain what Surge is. We're going to introduce the chapter dashboard, explain the process of collection, creation, invitation, and connection in detail. Um, and we're going to talk about um, what we can do for you and what we need you to do to make the process work. And then, of course, if you have any questions, we'll answer them for you at the end of the presentation. Um, so you should see a, a box in the top right of the webinar screen um, that has a place for you to type any questions. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that um, whenever one pops up, or um, if you want to wait until the end, we'll, we'll ask if anyone has any questions. Um, and then also, if for some reason you can't hear us, or you can't see us, or there's um, something going on, you can also just let us know there, too which hopefully we won't have any issues with that. Um, so we are going to give you a lot of information today. But there will be a recording of this webinar that will be available for viewing later. Um, and this presentation is also going to go over a lot of what is explained in the Surge packet, uh, which you can download at fivesimapi.org backslash Surge and use as a resource later. Um, so before we talk about recruitment, we're going to do a couple of quick polls here just for us to kind of gauge our audience and see where you're at today. Um, so you should see the poll now. So why are you here? Um, did you participate last term? You want to see what's changed? Uh, maybe you know nothing about Surge. You're just kind of told that you should come to this webinar um, and you're here to learn. Or maybe you've read a little bit about it already and you want to learn more. So go ahead and just let us know where, why you're here today. All right, we'll wait for the last minute. Okay. All right. Um, so it looks like most people are here today because they know nothing about Surge and they want to learn more. Um, and then, of course, a lot of people who have read about Surge um, and want to learn more. So that's perfect. Um, you are going to learn a lot today if you're in the right place. All right, we're going to do one more question. Have you enrolled in Surge, or has your chapter, someone in your chapter, enrolled uh, your chapter in Surge? And if you don't know and you're not sure, just go ahead and hit not, not yet. That's fine. All right, looks like we have most votes in. All right, so most of you have said yes, so you are enrolled. Um, and we do have some of you that said not yet, and that's fine. I will show you how to do that at the end of the webinar, and we'll get you enrolled. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, recruitment. Um, as always, recruitment is a priority for us. We hope it's for your chapter as well. Um, we thought it would be fitting to start out with a discussion of why we recruit and why it is so important and why we created this initiative. So. Um, the number one reason that we want to share as to why recruitment matters is because we want to see our mission carried out. 
Uh, so Five Seven Five's mission is to improve humanity through social service uh, through our ideals of scholarship, leadership, and fellowship. So in order for us to have the biggest impact on humanity, we need to recruit. We need to be developing leaders. Um, and of course, as an inclusive organization, we believe that everyone deserves an opportunity to, to serve and to become a leader. Um, so if your checker's not recruiting and you're not giving students on your campus the opportunity to join, um, then we're not being very inclusive in carrying out that mission. Uh, so this is a big reason why you recruit, and it should be the number one driving factor for your growing your chapter. The second one we, to, the second one we want to talk about is um, chapter strength. So your chapter needs hands to serve in e-board positions and to plan events, and the more hands and skills available to your chapter, the stronger your chapter will be. Um, so we know that members are going to leave. It's inevitable. They're going to graduate um, and leave their collegiate chapter. Um, so we want to make sure that we're recruiting and adding members to balance that out. Um, so if we're not recruiting, your chapter will weaken, will weaken and could eventually die out. And of course, we don't want that to happen. A third reason why we recruit is for resources. Um, so member dues sustain national operations. They allow us to have technology a dedicated chapter consultant for each chapter, national staff, national events and programs like national convention and leadership in action, and so much more. Um, so collecting dues is really important for our fraternity to even exist. Um, and they also help you too. Local dues collected from members contribute to the opportunities and capabilities of your chapter. So the more people that you're recruiting, the more opportunities that your chapter will have um, through collecting local dues. You can plan um, your, your formals, you can send more people to national convention and whatnot. And lastly, uh, the most, most important that we look at the big picture. Um, so you are not your chapter. You're part of something so much bigger. Um, and it's the responsibility of each individual chapter to contribute to the health and strength of the overall fraternity. So when you're recruiting members for your chapter, you're recruiting lifelong brothers for Five from the Pi who will carry out our mission into their professional careers. Um, and that is so much bigger and such an awesome vision to have. So recruitment is vital. Uh, but we kind of began to realize that chapters just weren't meeting their potential. We saw a trend of smaller chapters that were wanting to grow and desiring to grow, but just couldn't get over the hump and couldn't find out how to do that. And I know I met a few members um, from chapters like this at Leadership Academy who were thinking, you know, well, that's great that you have all these members, but we're a small chapter and we can't, we don't know how to recruit um, and grow our chapter. So therefore, we created what we called the Recruitment Boost Initiative in the spring of 2017. This was the pre-surge, just kind of a trial run of the initiative to see what it would look like if it had potential and how it would land with our members. And it used a strategy of personal invitations and an RSVP process, which is used by our expansion team, and has been very successful in recruiting founders to start new chapters. So the the purpose of RBI was to increase the number of potential new members who come through a chapter's recruitment process. Um, and this remains the purpose of Surge today. So we asked 60 chapters of varying sizes and levels of recruitment success to participate. So this wasn't just for our smaller chapters. We wanted to see that if our, if our stronger chapters who do really well with recruitment already use this, if they could make them even stronger with this initiative. Um, so these are just the numbers that came from the trial run last term. The average number of RSVPs received for invitational meetings was 121. The average number of P&Ms that attended an invitational meeting per chapter was 61. 50% of these chapters reached or surpassed their induction goal um, during pinning. And then 82 of these chapters became more potential new members in the spring of 2017 than they did a year ago in the spring of 2016. And 31% of these chapters even doubled or more than doubled their pinning number. So in total, 1,175 members were pinned by those 60 chapters. And that averages out to about 20 members per, chap per chapter. Uh, so all in all, this led to the biggest term of recruitment in recent PSD history. So uh, you know, we're confident this program is beneficial and that it does work. Um, but we did have a period of review. We looked at these numbers. We talked with uh, chapters that participated last term and got their feedback. Um, and we were able to revise some of the processes to make them a little more efficient. Uh, we created more educational materials so that our members were prepared to start the process once the treatment started. Um, and we are now officially launching the program to all chapters under a new, new brand. Um, so it's no longer the Recruitment Boost Initiative um, is now Surge. 
Um, so before we go through the search process, we want to introduce you to a very important tool that will be used throughout the process, um, and that is your chapter dashboard. The dashboard is a Google spreadsheet on the Google Drive that will be shared with your search contact, um, your chapter consultant, and all of your members who will be involved with recruitment as you indicate to us. And it's really a tool to help us keep the process organized, communicate information, and track your progress. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Megan, who will walk us through a sample of this dashboard and just kind of show you how your chapter can best utilize it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Casey. So the first tab we have is the overview tab, and that has contact information for everyone that you might need to see or talk to um, through the search process. Uh, you also have links to make it easy to navigate to whatever tab you're looking for and a quick description that describes what each tab is for, what information you might find there. The second tab is your chapter roster and that's going to include a full list of everyone in your chapter and you'll notice that we use color coding to indicate the main contact for recruitment in purple and in the yellow color, any additional people that might be on the recruitment committee or uh, your president or vice president, anyone who has a vested interest in seeing recruitment um, be a success and would act as one of the main contacts. The next tab is the recruitment schedule. Um, and this is where we're going to document dates and times for any important recruitment related events. Um, in the light purple color, that would be meetings that are just private to your chapter, maybe your president and recruitment advisors meeting with the chapter consultant. Um, or having practice for your recruitment advisors prior to an invitational meeting presentation. The yellow ones are the ones that are most important to this process, and those are the ones that you are going to advertise to potential new members. So you'll notice that in column D, we have the uh, date and time, location for invitational meetings and recruitment events. It is super important that that information is you know, accurate and that it's listed in this format so that you have it available to pass on to us so that we can put it into the emails that go out to potential new members. And in the dark purple, you'll see additional recruitment-related events that you may not advertise to potential new members, but are still important for your chapter consultant and the others of us to know. The PNM list tab is probably the most important tab um, on the dashboard, and you can see um, that we have listed on the left-hand side contact information, including expected graduation, first name, last name, email, phone, um, and then the RSVP information that either Scott or Casey will enter into your spreadsheet so that you have it available to you so you know who to expect for any invitational meeting. And then you have the purple columns, and those are the ones that you're going to be responsible for filling in. So you might ask the um, potential new member how they found out about uh, PSP at your campus and so recruitment email obviously we anticipate but there might be other on-campus PR that you're doing that's working or social media or you might have a member refer them so we'd ask that you ask that information when they're signing in and mark it there and then over here in the columns for invitational meeting you would just put an X to show that they did attend um, or leave it blank if they didn't and you can also use this to track recruitment uh, event attendance which can be helpful to know how effective your invitational meetings are, if they're coming back to recruitment events or not. A lot of chapters use this as well to track uh, personal follow-up, which you can do there on the right-hand side um, by saying if someone's going to text or Facebook message to follow up personally and putting initials for the member who took care of it. The next tab that I'm going to highlight is our message board. And our message board basically is in place of sending emails. Um, it can get really cumbersome to send a bunch of emails um, back and forth, and sometimes, you know, we forget to copy in people who need to know the information. So this would be a way for you to communicate um, with anyone here on our staff. So what we would do um, is you would just type in your message here in, like, this gold bar, for example. So you could just type in, we are changing the date of invitational meeting to September 1st. And then once you put in that message, you can right click and insert a comment and tag Casey. So if she's your contact, you would just tag her 
um, and include in there that um, you know she's the person that you want to get the message by just starting to type her first name. You'll notice that there are other tabs at the bottom as well, information that tells you about past recruitment, um, also a checklist where you can keep track of things that need to get done, delegate them to people in your chapter, shows you what the national office will be doing. In addition, you can mark the status, whether or not it's been completed. And volunteer sign up and student org list are two other resources where you can make sure that you have members that are coming to your events under the volunteer sign up. And the student org list is basically to make sure that you have members that are connecting with other organizations that they already have relationships with on behalf of your chapter. So if I am a student in PSP, but I also sit on the student government board, um, I might be the contact for student government to get the word out about recruitment. Overall, the thing to know about the dashboard is just that it is a perfect way for you to communicate and keep us informed about what's going on with your recruitment process. And it's a great way for us to communicate back with you if there's anything that we need. Perfect. Thank you, Megan. Um, so yes, every chapter will receive their own dashboard um, that you can use throughout this process and for recruitment. All right, so now that you're familiar with the dashboard, we're going to talk about the process. Um, so the search process is broken down into four different stages. Uh, we have the collection of information, the creation of marketing tools, the invitation of PMs to your events, and the connection through reminders and follow-up emails. Um, so the first step is collection of information. Uh, so for in order to communicate the correct information to your potential new members, we need to get that information from you. I mean, we want to do that first. Uh, so let's start with event information. Um, so it's obvious, it's, it's pretty obvious, but we want to make sure that what we need from you is clear. Uh, so we're going to need the event names, uh, dates and times, and locations for all of your events. And you're going to put these in the recruitment schedule tab of the dashboard, and these are those yellow events that Megan had just showed you. And we ask that you write it out in the format shown here, and the, there is an example in your dashboard that can kind of guide you of how a request that you fill it out. Um, but you'll see here we have the name of the event, so maybe it's dog toy making as one of your recruitment events. Um, you have the date and time, Wednesday, August 30th at 7 p.m., and of course the location, SNP call. Um, so this, this event name is going to go in one column, and then all of this should be write out, written out in this format, um, so it reads like this um, in another column. And just two tips on this. You want to make sure that you're writing down exactly what you want to say. Your search contact is actually going to take this directly from your dashboard and use it on your website and other pieces. So we want to make sure that we're saying exactly what you want to say. So um, if you want this to just say service event, you could say that. But if you want it to be specific, make sure you put the specific name and write it out as you want it said. Um, and lastly, make sure that you're using terms that uh, students from your school are going to recognize. So for example, when I went to school, um, we had the Dagenstein Student Center, but everybody just called it DAG. That's how we knew it. It was DAG. Um, so you're going to want to use those sort of terms that are going to resonate more with your students, um, and you know best as to what that would be. Um, so we're going to do a, another quick poll. Um, so about what time would your chapter typically have all this information finalized? You've scheduled your events. You, um, you know, got your rooms all finalized, about when would you have that done? Just kind of for us to gauge um, and see how your chapters work. And if you're not sure, you've never um, planned your recruitment, you're not quite sure when, how this process works, you can, you can say that as well. Be honest. All right, looks like we have most everybody. Um, all right, so it looks like most everybody will have this information before the first day of classes, which is awesome. Um, and everyone will at least have it a week before recruitment starts. Um, and that's ideal. Um, you'll see in this process that uh, we, everything really kind of does kick off a week before uh, recruitment as far as us reaching out to your potential new members. Um, but of course, you want to do this as soon as possible. Um, you can go ahead now, start scheduling your rooms and um, you know, having all this planned, so that's awesome. 
All right. Um, so there are two types of events. So we really do just kind of want to go over this because we, we do really separate these two in the process. So um, we want to make sure that you know, you know really what we're talking about uh, when we say invitational meeting or recruitment event. Uh, so an invitational meeting, or you may know them as info sessions. Invitational meeting is a term that Phi Sigma Pi officially uses and we prefer. So um, you'll hear us talk about them as invitational meetings. Uh, but these are informative and educational events where Phi Sigma Pi's mission, ideals, and requirements for joining are communicated. Um, and every chapter is constitutionally required to hold to each recruitment. And then your recruitment event is an event that displays the mission and ideals of Phi Sigma Pi while creating a casual environment for current members to interact with potential new members. So these are your game nights, your trivia events, your ice cream socials, um, those sort of things. So the invitational meeting is really the telling part, and the recruitment event is the showing part. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that that was made clear because we do really kind of separate the two in the process. All right. Uh, so we're going to do another quick poll before we get into email list. All right. So what is your chapter's recruitment structure? Do you typically have like Monday and Tuesday invitational meetings, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday recruitment events? Do you kind of like switch it up? Like you might have an invitational meeting, then a recruitment event, invitation day, recruitment event, or do you do like a short invitational meeting before each of your recruitment events? If you're not sure, just kind of put down what you, you see your chapter doing this term. Give you a couple more seconds here. Put your vote in. All right. Um, so it looks like most chapters have a few days of invitational meetings, then recruitment events. This is kind of the standard, this is kind of the ideal structure that we use with this process. But of course, we realize that every chapter is different, every chapter kind of plans a little differently and has a different structure. So we'll work with your chapter um, however your structure is with your recruitment events. So this is just kind of good for us to know. All right. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the collection of your email list. So this is simply a list of potential new members and their emails. And every school is different on how you obtain an email list. The best place to start is to ask your administration office or your faculty advisor. Um, and there are more tips on in your search packet on obtaining these lists. So I encourage you to check that out and contact your chapter consultant if you have any issues with getting one. But you're going to want to be sure um, to include only students that are eligible uh, in your list. Obviously, we don't want to invite anyone who can't actually join. Um, so when you do request your list, make sure you ask for students with a 3.0 GPA or higher, um, or whatever matches the specific requirement for, that your chapter has. Some chapters require a higher GPA. Um, you don't want to include freshmen or first years in the fall, and you don't want to include seniors in the spring. Um, and of course, we only want to invite undergraduate students. Um, so once you receive this list, uh, just make sure to open it. Make sure it's in the format you see below. You want to have a column for first name a column for last name and a column for email. Um, and if it does include like their major or their home address, uh, we don't need that, so you can go ahead and delete those. And then once you have it all ready, you can go ahead and send it over to recruitment at fivesignapi.org and just include your chapter in the subject so you know who it's coming from. All right, so after we have your event information and email list, we move into the creation phase. So you've done all your work and now it's time to do R, to do what we do best. So every chapter will receive a web page for the specific purpose of recruitment. So you'll be given a fivesigmapi.org backslash your school name page. Um, and this won't be accessible from the main web page, um, but anyone who has the link um, can access it. So we're going to go ahead and look at an example. We're going to use um, A to Data Chapters page that they had last term at Old Dominion University. So um, their backslash is backslash ODU, and we will use whatever kind of nickname is most common for your school. If you're, you know, Temple University, backslash Temple, backslash Radford, um, you know, backslash NMSU for New Mexico State University. So um, we will use whatever is most commonly used. So let's take a look at this here. All right, so this is just, again, just a very simplified snapshot. We just want to be able to show you some sort of example of a web page. And, um, this will look different when it comes time to make your web page. 
Um, see a little different design here, just a little, little tip for you. Um, so as you'll see here, we'll include your chapter name, um, what school you're at, we'll include your founding date. We also have the contact information of your chapter president and your recruitment advisor. And just a note that we will use whatever email that you provide us in your chapter dashboard, in the chapter roster tab. So if you want this to be, you know, something different, make sure to note that in the roster. Some school or some chapters use a chapter specific email, um, like A to Data might have uh, PFP A to Data President at gmail.com. And if you want us to use that, just of course be sure to communicate that with us. Then you'll see your invitational meetings and your recruitment events listed here. Um, and at the bottom, you will see your RSVP form. We're going to take a look at that in a second in a different screen, but that will be down there. And this button up here is just um, if someone comes to your web page and they don't need this information, they just want to RSVP, they can click this button and it will anchor them down to the RSVP form. And that really helps on mobile um, so they don't have to scroll so much. So again, this is just a simple snapshot of your web page. Um, every chapter that enrolls will have one. Um, and again, it is for the specific purpose of recruitment. Um, so it will be closed at a designated time when recruitment is over. Um, this page won't be up uh, all year long. All right, so now we're going to take a look at that RSVP form. Um, again, this will be on your chapter website, but we're just going to look at it on its own for right now. So we ask your PNM to RSVP to your invitational meeting. So this is the form that they'll fill out to kind of accept their invitation. Um, it's a great it's great to get information on potential new members, to know who they are and who you're going to expect at your event. So as you'll see here, we ask for their first name, their last name, their email. We do also ask for their phone number. Um, we, this is an optional question. Um, it's some of the feedback that we got from members last term that they thought maybe potential new members wouldn't want to give their phone number and that might keep them from RSVPing, and of course we don't want to do that, so but we do leave this optional in case a potential new member does want to get text communications, um, like event reminders and follow-ups that your chapter may do. Um, we also ask for the expected graduation. We ask them how they heard about the opportunities. This is just some marketing research on our part so we can see how they got here to your web page. Um, and of course we ask them to select the invitation meeting that they will be attending, um, and they only select one. Um, and then once they fill this out, they'll hit the submit button and it will take them to a thank you page that just kind of reiterates um, the invitation means they signed up and has their information there. So where does this information go once they hit submit? submit. Um, unfortunately, you don't have control over where JotForm puts this submission information. Ideally, it would go right into your PNM tab list, but that's just not the case. Um, so it goes into a separate Google Sheet um, that Scott and I will both have um, access to. So we will be manually entering that information from the Google Sheet into your PNM list. And we'll make sure to do that before each of your events. So when you go in and to take attendance at the event, it'll be the most up to date. So the purpose of this RSVP form is to gain commitment to attending the invitational meeting. So you'll notice that we only have really asked for RSVPs for your invitational meetings and not your recruitment events. Um, so we're going to go over that really quick and just kind of why we chose invitational meetings over recruitment events. Um, and we kind of have three different points here to this. Uh, we do believe that invitational meetings are the most important because they give the most important information. They're not maybe the most fun, but they provide that necessary information. A common reason that a PNM might leave the initiation process is because they weren't made aware of the time or the financial commitment. So we want to make sure that they're getting that information up front and that they know that first and foremost, they know, you know what they're going to get from joining, but they know what's expected from them as well. The second reason is we want members that are going to buy into our mission and ideals first, then the people in our events. Um, so we want someone who knows who we stand for and who's going to stand with us in that, um, not just someone who likes dodgeball, so they came to our dodgeball event and they're going to join because of that. Um, we want them to buy into our mission first, and then, of course, have fun at our events. And then lastly, a good invitational meeting will bring PNM back to your recruitment event. Um, so we're going we're gonna to get them to the invitational meeting for you, and then it's kind of your responsibility to put on that stellar invitational meeting, make them say, yes, I want to learn more, I want to you know, meet these members, and I want to come back to their recruitment events. 
So as you notice, we will advertise your recruitment events on your web page. It will advertise them in your follow-up emails. We don't completely forget about them. Uh, but you should also be marking them at the end of your invitational meetings. All right, so now that we've talked about the creation of your chapter web page and RSVP form, the last part of this stage is recruitment materials. So there will be a new recruitment campaign in the fall of 2017. Um, and I don't have that for you yet. It's not quite ready for unveiling, um, but you will see that soon. Um, but the materials that will be available with this campaign are posters, Facebook banners, social media graphics, and um, a short little recruitment video that you can share um, and use during your recruitment. Now, if you want any of these materials customized to your chapter's recruitment information, um, you're going to want to request that through the recruitment materials request form that you will find on fivesmapi.org backslash search. Um, so options for personalization include adding your invitational meeting and recruitment event information, adding contact information such as you know, your recruitment advisor's name and email, and adding your web page link. And if you want to request something that you don't see here, for example, maybe you need a different size poster, or your school allows you to make table tents, or there's a TV in your student union that you want to put a graphic up to advertise, you can do that as well. Um, so we will design anything to your needs, um, but just so you know, it is the responsibility of your chapter to print any physical materials, um, to print your posters and whatnot. So we're going to do another quick poll. So what is your current plan for marketing materials? Are you more likely to request custom materials to just use what's provided with the campaign, or is it more likely that your chapter will create your own materials? And again, this is just to gauge. Go ahead, give you a few seconds to put your vote in. All right, share this out here. So it's like most chapters plan on uh, creating their own, um, but just so you know that this is a service that's available to you, um, and maybe you'll change your mind once you see the re new recruitment campaign. Um, but yes, you can request custom materials. It will be on the fightsofhide.org backslash surge web page. Okay. So, the third phase of Surge is sending invitations to your PMs through email marketing. So, at this point, we've done a lot of preparation, but we haven't actually reached out to your PMs. Uh, so, this is the phase that we're going to do that. So, we'll take the email list provided to us and send it out two different emails. So, the first email is an invitation to attend your invitational meeting. Uh, so, this is the first point of contact. So, it'll go out to your whole list, ideally one week before your first event. Um, in some cases, you may not, you know, maybe you won't get your list until three days before your first event. But um, so we do have kind of this ideal timeline, but we'll work with your chapter, of course, and adjust it accordingly to work with you. So we're going to take a look at a sample of this email and what it would look like. Um, this is kind of the template that was used last term, so this banner is going to change, and um, this might look a little different. But again, we just wanted to give you an example of what this would look like. So the purpose of this email is to personally invite PNMs to your invitational meeting. Um, so as you see here, it personally greets them using their first name. Uh, we'll have your school in here, and we just kind of use ODU as an example. It'll have your invitational meeting. So again, right now we're only focusing on your invitational meeting at this point. And of course, it will have a call out for them to go to your chapter webpage and accept their invitation by filling out that RSVP form. And the major part that kind of really makes this personal is we'll have your, signet, your name and the signature down here. So whoever your main uh, point of contact is for recruitment, it might be your president, but more likely it's going to be your recruitment advisor. Uh, we'll put their name down here, their position, and their email address. Just kind of really, really personalizes, personalizes it, make it look like it came directly from you. Um, so this is a strategy that's sort of um, RCP and also the personalization of the strategy that's been used by our expansion efforts for several terms now. People really do appreciate personal outreach. It looks like it's coming from someone and not necessarily just the national office. 
Um, so just a little tip for you, know that these emails are coming from you. And you will know your search contact will update your dashboard as to when these are being sent out. Um, so you know, a student might come up to you and say, hey, I got your email about you know, joining Phi Sigma Pi. You're not going to go, I didn't send you an email. You want to know it. Uh, know that this email sent out in your name and you want to own it. All right, so that's the first email that's going to go out. So we're going to send a second email. Um, it's just a reminder for them to accept their invitation. So this will go out to the list provided as well. But we're not going to send it to those who already RSVP'd. So we don't want to confuse anyone and say to them, hey, you haven't RSVP'd um, if they already have. So it won't go to them. So this will be sent about two days prior to your first invitation meeting. And the purpose is simply to remind them that they received this invitation. It's a last effort to get them to RSVP. So again, simple snapshot. There's no new information here. Um, it's just a reminder. We all know how it goes. You, you receive an, an email and you forget about it, or you completely miss it, or you know something comes up and you just didn't have a chance to RSVP yet. Um, so this is a, a last-ditch effort so they don't miss out on this opportunity. And we have found that there is real value in sending the second email. RSVPs typically jump dramatically after the second email is sent. Um, so before we move from emails, just a real quick note on spam and junk folders. Uh, different colleges and universities have different rules when it comes to emails and what students can receive from email addresses outside the university. So there's always the threat that five of the pie emails will be sent to spam or junk folder. Um, and good indications of this are if you have a large email list, um, but you have a low RSVP count, that's always kind of a red flag. Or if you have a very low delivery or open rate, it's obviously a red flag. So your search contact and your checker consultant have access to these indicators, and we will be monitoring this for you. So in the event that we believe that if the emails have gone to spam, we'll reach out to you, and we'll work with you um, in your IT department to get the problem solved. And normally it's just having our email address whitelisted so that they can go through. All right, the very last phase of surge is connection. Um, so these are event reminders and follow-ups. It will automatically be sent out through JOT form, which is the program that we use with our RSVP forms. Um, so these emails are already set up and scheduled to send to whoever RSVPs for each event. So for the reminder emails, these go out the day before each of your invitational names to, any, to anyone who RSVPs for that specific event. So if someone RSVPs for an event on Wednesday, they'll get this email on Tuesday. Um, so the purpose is simply to remind them of their event details. We'll reiterate the time and location um, of the event so that they know. Um, and it also includes a call out for them to choose another event if for some reason they can't make it. So if they something came up and they can't make it anymore, it'll have your web page link for them to go and RSVP for a different event. Um, before we get into follow-up, I'm just going to do one more quick poll. Does your chapter typically do follow-ups? So do you send, after your invitation means, do you send follow-up emails? Do you send follow-up texts? Do you do some other sort of personal follow-up, maybe Facebook message or, you know, find them in the cafeteria? Um, or do you not typically do follow-ups? Give a couple more seconds here for people to get their votes in. Okay, uh, so it looks like at large most chapters don't do follow-ups. Um, some do email, some do text, some do some other personal uh, follow-up. Um, so this is going to be a really great tool for you if you don't already do follow-ups. I know it's one thing that members really appreciated last term is these follow-up emails. Um, so that will be great for your chapter to be able to take advantage of this. Um, so talking about the follow-up emails, uh, these encourage our PNMs to take the next step. So these are sent the day after each invitational meeting. So again, if a PNM RSVP on Wednesday, they'll get this on, th on Thursday. And this email just includes a link to your remaining invitational meeting date. Um, just a quick note that this email will go out to anyone who RSVP'd, whether or not they attended. Um, so if they didn't attend, they'll still get this email. And if a member did attend your invitation meeting but didn't RSVP, they won't get this email because obviously they're not in the RSVP system. So for those people, you're going to want to take responsibility of following up with them personally uh, with your chapter. So if 
a member RSVP but didn't attend, they'll get the web page link where they can go back and RSVP for a different meeting since they missed it. Um, this email will also include your e recruitment event information, so we'll advertise the rest of your events for recruitment. It will include links to helpful PSP resources such as eligibility, requirements for joining, and fast facts about the future meeting. So once the last follow-up email is sent, the search process has been completed. Your RSVP form will automatically close the day after your last invitational meeting. Um, so this prevents people from RSVPing to events that have already passed. Um, and all chapter web pages will remain open until recruitment as a whole has ended. That way, PNM can go back and see um, your contact information if need be, or see your recruitment event information. So the very last aspect of connection is your chapter connecting with PNMs. So Surge will support you in getting your PNMs to your event, uh, but ultimately it's the responsibility of your chapter to welcome them, to educate them, show them who Phi Sigma Pi is, and to connect with them. So speaking of responsibilities, I'm going to bump it back to Megan again. She's going to jump in and just kind of lay out who will be doing what during this process. Thanks so much, Casey. So as I mentioned, um, my name is Megan Kaufman. I'm the Director of Chapter Services. My role is to oversee the entire process and address any broad issues that might impact the success of the process for specific chapters. So you can contact me if you have questions about PNM eligibility or if you need answers to questions that the consultant or search contact don't have the answers to. And any feedback on the initiative, you can pass that on to me as well. Um, Scott and Casey, we've already met them, and they're going to act as the main contact for the recruitment advisor and handle the day-to-day -day process, including RSVPs and the PNM list to the PNM list, and generating emails and scheduling follow-ups. Um, so you can contact either Scott or Casey, whichever is assigned to your chapter, um, for questions about the email process, changes to event information, and to request marketing materials, as well as any issues with delivery of recruitment emails, um, like going to spam. Your chapter consultant is going to be someone who can provide expert support and guidance for everything related to recruitment. So specifically, they can assist with obtaining an email list, and they're also going to be able to answer most any question regarding recruitment, which could include planning events, um, utilizing marketing opportunities on your campus, processes for voting, pinning, um, requirements, and preparing for initiation. And the chapter members, you guys, whether it be your recruitment advisors, your chapter president, or a recruitment committee, or someone else in your chapter, you are responsible for maintaining contact with us during this process. And that includes updating the dashboard regularly and responding promptly when information is requested. Um, and most importantly would be to meet, immediately update information on the dashboard if changes occur. Um, marking attendance of PNMs and adding names of those who don't RSVP is also very important. Following up personally with all PNMs, and that includes um, those who RCP and those who don't. Remember that anyone who RCPs will get a follow-up email, but the personal follow-up is really important too, whether that be via text message or Facebook message. You're also going to communicate any questions that you have and issues um, in a timely manner to the staff here. Just want to point out that this process is very time sensitive, so it's super important that um, as things change, as things come up, if you hit any bumps in the road that you're communicating with us by using that message board tab in particular, or if something is particularly time sensitive, um, you know, calling the office here to get help from one of the surge contacts, um, making sure that we are moving forward through the process um, and so that it's a supportive piece of your recruitment. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about before we go into questions is just sort of the what is. Um, so what we've described here is an ideal process where everything goes to plan. Uh, but we know that that's not always what happens. There can be issues um, like weather issues or mistakes that are made by school administration that kind of put a wrench in your recruitment. Um, so I'm going to go through some what if scenarios and talk about what to do if this happens to you. So what if I need to change the date, uh, time, and or location of the event? Um, so you have your recruitment events planned, but um, you know, school administration emails you and says, we moved you from this room to this room. What do you do? Um, first of all, you're going to want to contact your search contact immediately. Um, so go ahead and go in your dashboard and change 
the location and then leave a comment and let us know that it's changed. Um, steps will be taken depending on where we're at in the process. So if it's weeks before your first event, or your email hasn't even gone out yet, it might just be you know, changing it on your web page and making sure that it's communicated correctly in your email. But if it's something like the day before, you might want to send out an emergency email to those who RSVP'd um, and let them know uh, that the location has changed. Okay, similarly, what if I need to cancel an event last minute? Um, we had an example of this last term where a snowstorm hit and they had to cancel their event the day of. Um, so again, contact your surge contact immediately. Um, like I said, we can send out emergency emails to those who RSVP for the event, let them know the situation that's been canceled. Um, but of course, you're going to want to utilize your tools as well, post it on social media, have your members share it out, let your school know. Um, and if you're able, put up a sign on the door um, in case the KM doesn't get our email. Um, and they check out in the snow and they get there. We don't want them just waiting for you. We want them to know that's been canceled. In the last scenario, what if we won't know our location is closer to the date and won't be able to meet the timeline? Communication is key here. Let your search contact know your situation and keep them updated. Um, you know, for example, you might want to leave a comment in your dashboard and say, I'll have this information by Friday. That's so much better than just not putting anything in and kind of lets us know that you're working on it and lets us know when we'll be able to get your information and work on um, creating those materials for you. And of course, avoid last minute planning. The sooner you book your rooms and plan your dates, the better, um, so you won't have this situation. Um, but again, we, we described an ideal timeline, um, but we will amend the timeline as needed. Um, if you don't get your list until two days before your first event, then we'll send the email two days before your first event. Um, we'll, work, we'll work with your chapter with whatever comes up. But um, the common theme here is that communication is key. You just always want to be in communication with your surge contact so you know what's going on. All right, so I know that was a lot of information. If you have a question, go ahead and type it in the question box and let us know, um, and we'll answer it for you. So go ahead, there should be a box in the top right-hand corner, unless you moved it, um, that has a question section. You can go ahead and type in a question. All right. Um, so you have a question here. Can we have PNMs RSVP at the invitational meetings if they didn't already? Um, if a PNM didn't RSVP by the time they get the invitational meeting, you just want to write their information in for them um, in the PNM list tab. Um, if, if they want to, they can RSVP, that's totally fine. Um, your form will still be up, um, so they can do that and they'll receive that email. Um, so either you can have them RSVP or you can just type it in for them. All right, we have a question about obtaining the email list. Um, so they have had a lot of trouble doing that and what we suggest if they can't get a list from school. So you have a couple of different options. First of all, I would see if your school has a different option rather than obtaining a list. Some schools have a list search, or they have their own sort of program where they'll send out an email on your behalf. And if that's the case, um, we don't have the ability to send to a list search, but we can send you personally the email that we would have sent um, so that you can send it out through that list serve, or you can um, just kind of like copy that information um, and give it to your school to send out on your behalf. If they don't have that, you can always create your own list. Um, this can be done through tabling, um, having interested students or people that you talk with um, put their names down and put their emails down. You can kind of create your own list from that. Uh, we're going to have Megan jump in. She has something to add here. Um, we've seen this happen with a number of chapters, and the consultants and I have helped um, when needed uh, to create lists. So that could even be from a dean's list that might be published on your website. Um, your school's website for the previous term, uh, so you could build a, a list from that. Um, it's better to have some lists than no lists, so another option would be to go to your student organizations page and send the email to all student leaders, and we might be able, we can customize the language in the email, so it might say something like, 
you know, you're part of an organization leader and we um, want you to pass this on to other people as part of your organization. So we can be flexible with how to meet that need, um, but we definitely have dealt with this with a lot of different chapters. Um, there are a number of different processes, and there are some schools that prefer to talk to someone from the national office. So if you ever feel like you're hitting a wall, reach out to your chapter consultant or to me directly, and we will jump right in and do whatever we can to help. Okay, thanks, And lists can be all different sizes. Sometimes we get a list of 50 people because that's all they could get from tabling, and that's all they're able to get. And sometimes we have lists of 20,000. Um, so we will, we will use whatever we're able to get. All right, can you remind us where the surge packet is? Um, it's on the Backlash Surge page. Um, so I will, I'm actually going to go there and show you in a couple seconds. All right, and we have a question about customizing the emails with a picture from our chapter. Um, right now, we don't have the ability to customize the emails. Um, that is something that we have been discussing and talking about and we'll have a plan for in the future. Um, but right now, we aren't able to include custom pictures of chapters. All right, does social media usually help with recruitment efforts? I would say yes. Wherever you can shout about PSP is always beneficial. Um, I think it depends if you're using a chapter account. Um, it depends on your following and sort of what kind of presence you have social, on social media as to how effective it will be. Um, but I would definitely encourage you to get your members involved. Have them send out stuff on their personal account. Create a graphic or use a graphic that you can email to the whole chapter and say, hey, post this on your personal social media and tell them to RSVP at your link. Um, that can be very beneficial and um, you know every member in your chapter knows different people at your school and that might land and reach different people. I'll give a couple more seconds here if someone wants to type in the last minute question. Okay, let's see. Would you suggest if we participate in Surge that we use the National Office Recruitment Campaign so that everything looks the same? This is the ideal. Ideally, I would say yes. Um, you know, branding is really important. When someone sees their email and they see the campaign used there, if they see the campaign on a poster, it's going to resonate with them a little more and pull them in a little bit more. So um, we would encourage you to use our recruitment campaign um, on everything so that there is some sort of brand recognition there. Just wanted to add too that a lot of times chapters are hesitant to use the National Offices campaign, especially when they want to do a theme. Um, we really want to encourage you to use Phi Sigma Pi as your theme. We have a lot to offer, so pulling in a theme um, like the beach, that can be fun. Maybe you have a theme at an event. Um, but that isn't what we are going for when we are marketing our organization and our values to um, people who are going to be interested in being a part of what we are. Um, so I would really just encourage you to um, use our national offices campaign in lieu of themed uh, marketing. Um, and also just remember that with themed marketing, often we see um, chapters that are um, infringing on copyright <laughs> um, because they want to do something cool and so they you know, use Friends or The Simpsons or something, and um, ultimately they are actually violating the law. Um, so it really is important to utilize our campaign when you can, um, and it, it's just a great way to reach people who are going to be interested in what we have to offer. All right, um, my chapter does a full invitational meeting prior to each recruitment event. Would PNM still receive a follow-up email text to attend when there are none the next day? Um, so yes. Your PNMs will always receive a follow-up email after each invitational meeting, no matter how far away the recruitment event. Uh, but in this case, if you, if you have the structure of an invitational meeting right before your recruitment event, we normally advertise them together. So this is where you know, we're working with your chapter, depending on your structure. So for example, if you have an invitational meeting before an ice cream social, like right before, uh, we'll usually either advertise it as an ice cream social with an invitational meeting you know, right, right beforehand, 
or we'll advertise it as the invitation meeting with an ice cream social right afterward, just kind of whatever fits best. Um, so again, no matter what your, your recruitment structure is, just make sure your chapter, uh, your search contact is aware of that and understands it, and we'll make sure that our process works for you. And of course, when that follow-up email goes out, it won't include the recruitment events that have already passed. So when they get that email the next day, it won't include that recruitment event that you just had after your invitation meeting. All right. Um, looks like we got all of our questions answered here, so I'm going to go ahead then close out the question and answer portion. Um, but of course, if you ever have any questions at any point, you can reach out to any of us, Megan, Scott, or myself via email. Um, we're also all on Facebook and Twitter. You can reach out to us there as well. Okay, so just a little overview of what we talked about today before we end our time together. Um, the purpose is to get Phi Sigma Pi's name out on your campus and to invite PNMs to your invitational meeting. So just remember, the quantity drives quality. The more potential new members that you have coming through your process, your recruitment, the more likely it will be that you'll be adding quality members to your chapter. So ultimately, the goal is growing, and as you grow, you're going to add more quality members. 